I couldn't do this video on my own, so I'd like to thank Nick Calandra for putting in the legwork, laying down the groundwork, and for his willingness to be a giant stick in the mud in the face of all the fanboy naysayers who didn't like him pointing out that their favorite non-existent game was, well, non-existent. The day before was a game that seemed too good to be true and delivered exactly that. It was not good and it was not true. Unlike the other stacked asset flips in a trench coat, the day before received major press coverage, including multiple exclusives from IGN. It was the most wishlisted a game on Steam and partnered with Nvidia, in spite of dodgy trailers that seemed to be getting worse with each release, questionable working conditions, and multiple delays. When it finally released in early access on December 7, 2023, it became apparent the game was not open world, it was not an MMO, and there were barely any survival elements, or zombies for that matter, as advertised. It was a closed area extraction shooter with a maximum service size of 32 players. A bad game in two genres. Four days later, the game was taken off of Steam and the developers announced they were shutting down their studio. The question left lingering, how did this happen? Let's establish a timeline for the timeline. Before the day before, there was a developer team called Eight Points making a game called The Wild Eight. In April 2016, the project barely managed to raise its $50,000 Kickstarter goal at the last second. In January of 2017, Eight Points had a falling out and a few members went on to form Fantastic. In spite of the breakup, both teams continued to work together until they couldn't. In January 10, 2018, the game was sold to Hype Train Digital because there was, according to the Fantastic side, internal conflict with partners within the company. Hold on to that for now. Now for the day before. Developed by Fantastic, published by Mytona. The day before advertised itself for the first time in January 2021 as an open world MMO survival game. Games media outlets were tripping over themselves to circulate the four minute gameplay trailer. It was nice to look at, but I don't count scripted gameplay as a proper look at gameplay. I've played enough of these kind of games to know that while it is possible to end up in a shootout with other players, then need to shelter away from a blizzard, then escape from a swarm of zombies only to run into more zombies all in the span of two minutes. It's highly unlikely. You get that kind of action in linear, closed-in co-op zombie games like Dying Light, Dead Island, or Left 4 Dead. That's not happening in games like DayZ, and the day before was selling itself as more than all of that. As a side note, I'm not gonna argue whether scripted trailers are good or bad. They have their place, but I'm definitely not arguing that this is scripted or not because it is. People don't talk or move around like this naturally. Dude, there's too many of them. I, I gotta go upstairs. Okay, I'm running toward you. With that out of the way, February 27, 2021, IGN released an official exclusive video of combat gameplay. This time more guns are shown and even a tank. The graphics are still pretty and events are still blatantly scripted. Hey, April 9, 2021, IGN shows off another exclusive video of official gameplay. This time it's a beefy 13 minute segment with players roughing it through the woods in all-terrain vehicles to show off the open world of course. Even with its scripted events once again, the video is starting to show that there ain't much game to this game. Or at least the post-apocalyptic farms are just as lively as pre-apocalyptic farms. October 15, 2021, IGN shows another exclusive new gameplay trailer with added customizable bases but still not much excitement. And I think that the graphics are getting worse. Maybe there's too much daylight this time around and the game looks better in dim lighting. Relatable content. In this same video, the first official release date's given as June 21, 2022. But in an exclusive interview with IGN on May 5th, 2022, Fantastic announced that they're delaying their game release until March 1st, 2023, so they can swap from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. Bold move from the most wishlisted game of the time. June 27, 2022 is when things get odd. Fantastic make the news cycle for referring to their employees as volunteers. They clarify that there are full-time salaried volunteers and part-time volunteers being paid in participation certificates and free codes. English not being the studio's first language, maybe it was a communication issue. January 3rd, 2023. NVIDIA promotes an exclusive 4K RTX gameplay reveal for the day before on their official channels. Alright, the graphics are definitely getting worse now. I'm a gameplay first and graphics second kind of guy. But it strikes me as odd that the main thing the game had going for it 
It was degrading in a video meant to show off its graphics. January 24, 2023. Fantastic announced the day before his release would be delayed again until November due to a trademark dispute. A seasoned development studio somehow forgot to lock down the name of the game they were using for two highly publicized years. The perspective of the day before started to shift from another generic zombie game with good graphics to another generic zombie game scam with good graphics. February 2, 2023, an official gameplay trailer released showing a different visual style, a softer, less detailed style. Were they trying to distract me by swapping the usual player model with a cheeked up Fortnite looking tactically tight pants wearing survivor with a closer camera? Takes a lot more than thick thighs to pull the wool over my eyes. But it wasn't the 10 minutes of gameplay that popped up red flags. It was the 5 second trailer at the start. The next day, comparisons were drawn between those 5 seconds and a Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombies trailer. The day after, the day before his promotional material was compared to The Division, SnowRunner, and The Last of Us. Homage or ripoff. Gamers and games media were now voicing their doubts that the game was even real. Nick Calandra, editor-in-chief of Escapist Magazine at the time, spelled out his reasons for believing Fantastic were trying to pull a fast one, most of which forms the basis of what's been outlined so far. The lack of vetting or critical analysis from reputable games journalism sites with the biggest one leading the way was cause for concern. Not claiming that there was anything suspicious on the part of IGN or NVIDIA, but more so an evident and blatant disregard for quality control before and after the fact. As IGN showed off another trailer in June and one more on November in tandem with Fantastic announcing a delay, again, until December 7th. NVIDIA gave one last video nod to the day before on November 4th. It did in fact release. I joined Nick for a launch day stream on December 7th. Compared to just about every other online multiplayer zombie survival game out there, Unturned, Seven Days to Die, Project Zomboid, Survive the Nights, Day Z to name a few, there was nothing to do. My mistake, I should have been comparing it to other online extraction shooters, because that's what the game turned out to be. You go in, grab as much stuff as you can, and complete quests for currency. Then leave the level to buy better equipment so you can do more of that. But even then, I saw no reason to play this game over the others in the genre. Escape from Tarkov, Marauders, or even Zero Seaver. The day before was a bland game in the wrong genre, and a boring game in the right one. The math won math. Bad games are hyped all the time, but this was the most wishlisted game on Steam. I poked around over the weekend on Fantastic and Mytona. I figured I'd take it slow, work up a year-long or however long investigation on the side. So I didn't take as many screenshots and notes as I wish I would have, had I known Fantastic was going to make a run for it. December 11, 2023, four days after release, the developers shut down the game and the studio, and the CEO of Fantastic, along with his co-CEO brother, deleted his online presence. Twitter's gone. LinkedIn's scrubbed. Company website all gone except for a somber goodbye note with a smaller note beneath it about how to get a refund. Hindsight is 2020, but that doesn't excuse a lack of forethought. It doesn't take a black belt in Google Foo to find that Fantastic had a sloppy track record with online multiplayer games. The Wild 8, abandoned due to internal problems with peers. Dead Dozen, abandoned due to poor sales. Even if you think two failed multiplayer games ain't enough to write someone off, it sure doesn't inspire confidence that they can pull off what the day before was promising. Prop Night was closer to their range, but that came out after the day before started development. So not only are they making one of the most ambitious games never seen before, they're also doing it while developing another game. IGN not bothering to look under the hood is understandable. You show news. The game's hype, success, and failure is news so you show the game. I figured at least Nvidia would care enough about its reputation to dig deeper than 10 Google tabs before offering partnerships. Mytona, the publisher, definitely should have known better. The CEO and his co-CEO brothers started their company in Yakutsk, Russia. The Mytona brothers are developer big shots in their hometown. Whole scenes practically built around them and they claim to vet everyone they bring under their wing by funding their projects or inviting them to community events. Quote, before we begin cooperation, we study their abilities and prospects in detail. Unquote. The Fantastic Brothers, the ones who made the day before, also established themselves in the same area, Yakutsk, Russia. Both sets of brothers have known each other since at least 2016. The Mytona Bros were the ones that gave $15,000 to the Wild 8's Kickstarter when it was running out of time. Without their money, the game would not have been made when it was made. 
So, Maitona has first-hand experience with the Fantastic Brothers failing to make a good game and leaving it even after it's been funded. And yet, they not only fully funded the day before for Fantastic, they became their publisher. Maitona's partners like InDrive became Fantastic's partners. They even let Fantastic borrow the logo from one of Maitona's biggest games. Seeker's Notes That's Maitona's dark wood emblem, cut in half and mirrored. I'd love to put the tin foil of Fedora on and speculate. There were no fundraisers and no pre-orders. The day before has been taken off of the marketplace. It can't be purchased anymore and anyone can get a refund regardless of time spent playing or when they bought it. If it was a scam, it wasn't gamers that lost their money. It was investors and partners. It would be exciting to think the Fantastic Brothers have been scamming people for years and they finally stuck their hands in the wrong cookie jar. They knew the Mitona Brothers were generous. Or were they actually generous? How devious to believe Mytona gives smaller studios handouts to coax them into a partnership so they'll bite off more than they can chew. If Fantastic succeeds, then Mytona gets money. If Fantastic chokes, then Mytona gets Fantastic. A win-win scenario for Mytona. Unless they were both in on it together. Ooh, there's a thought. How juicy to think Fantastic were volunteering to be the fall guys for Mytona. The debts would be Mytona paying itself back. They'd keep the money from investors and couldn't be sued because Mytona X Fantastic ran a holding company, which means only Fantastic could be sued, but Fantastic is no more. Suspicious to think the trademark complaint scenario is less bizarre if you consider that maybe it was self-inflicted to buy time. Strangely enough, the complaint came from Korea, and Fantastic do have close ties in Korea, but to what end? Was Fantastic buying time to scam Mytona? Or were they stalling for time to avoid being eaten by Mytona? Or were both in cahoots to double dip from their own investors? Why are there no real offices at the registered Fantastic location in Singapore? Why didn't the CEO of the day before play his own game after launch? Tin foil hat off, unfortunately, the likely story is not as exciting and definitely not as sexy. Bad development and bad business make bad games. And gamers will never stop hyping up games before they're released. Who's really to blame when 201,000 copies were sold in a four-day period and people are still holding out for this game? But here's the silver lining. The systems are now in place to mitigate these kinds of damages. With YouTube and streamer culture being so prominent, it's easier to get the final product in front of people's eyes. More people could have bought the game without knowing. 46% of people refunded the game through a much more streamlined process than the one we had 10 years ago. It's safe to be recklessly hype about video games now. Well, let's not get too carried away there. There was no crowdfunding and no pre-orders this time around. That could have been a disaster, and everyone who gave in to those would have lost their money. As for games media, we don't have to doubt every game that's prettier than it plays, but perhaps a bit more scrutiny is in order. Maybe we make a Watchdog series or something that looks for red flags and trailers or something. There's an idea. I encourage you all to stay hyped. Within reason.